It's another edition of Acoustic Alternatives. This one looks a little different, doesn't it? This one is going to be first on many levels. It's the first time right after a house concert, I've grabbed an artist and said, hey, we're going to be on the podcast. It's the first time I've had somebody from out of the country. I've got somebody from Scotland with me today. And it's the first time one of my patrons, you're on Patreon, aren't you? And it's one of my patrons is hosting this house concert. And maybe this is like a bonus for him that everyone gets to, to use. So thank you to Stan Garfield, who was the uh, person who actually encouraged me to be on Patreon in the first place. He's also the person that introduced me to Iona Fife, who is my guest today. Iona, it is so good to spend some time with you after the show. Thanks so much for having me on. It's my pleasure. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed the show. I will admit in advance to all who are regular listeners and watchers of the video, I didn't have a lot of time to prepare for this. I got your CDs that I ordered in the mail like three days ago. Thanks. I ordered them a month ago. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> and they're here. Huh. I didn't buy them tonight. I bought them so I could hear them before I saw you. And uh, I didn't get a lot of time to spend with them. And then I didn't have a lot of time to throw together questions. So again, in advance, I apologize for, I hope I don't feel unprepared to you. No, it's fine. It depends on, on, on what news sources you looked at, because this could go so many different I, ways. I did look at lots of different things, and I, did, <laughs> I have lots of things to, uh, to ask about. But uh, we'll tell people that you're from Aberdeenshire, Scotland. It's your home. If, uh, well, it's actually your original home. You don't live there now, right? You live in Glasgow? Yeah, I live in a place called Springburn, which is north of Glasgow. Uh, um, it's an area, an SIMD area, so a Scottish Index of Multiple Deprivation Area, but it's salt of the earth people, lovely, a lot of artists around there. Um, so I've been living there for like four years, but I've been in Glasgow for eight years now, which is most of my adult life since wow. I was 17. Yeah, 17 plus eight is... 25. Yeah, 25. Very good. Yeah. I was looking at a map because I'm not really geographically good at these things. And I had tried to think like, okay, here I am in Michigan and this parallel. I wonder where Scotland... Well, Scotland's way up here, like parallel with, with Manitoba... Oslo. Oslo. I'll, yeah. Uh, like Aberdeen and Oslo are like, phew, that's but, why it's so cold, right? But for us Americans, like thinking about Canada, uh -huh. you've got uh, Manitoba and Alberta, Canada. New Finland's a little bit on the same parallel as well, but a little bit. St. John's. Yes. Yeah. So mm -hmm. essentially, you're that far north. It's freezing. Yeah. Like it's, you can see your breath and your house in the winter. Yes. Yeah. So that, that's cold. where she comes from. It's pretty far north and it probably affects your songwriting. It probably affects a lot of who you are. You got, you came to Michigan in August oh, where it's warm. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I could deal with this in the winter. Because you're used to being cold. Yeah, but when people say, oh, the States, I think they think of nice, warm Californian weather and don't necessarily realize that like half the country is like cold as well. Yes. Yeah. We get rather cold. We get like three months of nice weather and then the rest is... You know, yeah. yeah, we get like two days and that's it. Typical Scottish summer. Well, I would love to hear you sing one of your songs. Okay. What song would you like to start with? And maybe there's a quick story about it. You're thinking hard. I can see it. I am thinking hard. I will sing a song called Bonnie Udney, which I started off tonight's house concert kind of with. And um, it's very traditional. Um, we have loads of songs in Aberdeenshire. 91 out of 305 of uh, Francis James Child's ballads came from Aberdeenshire. Right. So like lots of scholars and folklorists like Alan Lomax, the, the first place they go when they came. Well, the first place they went when they came to the British Isles was Aberdeenshire because like Lomax met Hamish Henderson and Hamish Henderson was very fond of Aberdeenshire as a place to go and collect songs and to go and do some field work and brought, you know, Kenneth Goldstein and Alan Lomax also, James Madison Carpenter, another American folklorist, went to Aberdeenshire. So, like, it's been combed over for years and years and years and thought of as, like, a ballad heartland of the English-speaking world because so many of the songs came from there. They also went to the Appalachian Mountains and became whole other new things of their, their own and became the roots of, I guess, you know, some country songs. Um, you know, Shady Grove can be traced back to some ballads and... I guess Bob Dylan's Pretty Peggy on his first album is the Bonnie Lass of Fivey from 1492 in Aberdeenshire. And uh, the version that he got sounds very like the version that was collected in Knott County by Cecil Sharp in Kentucky. But we can see, okay, typically where that ballad came from, and that came from Aberdeenshire. Um, I recorded it just as like a digital download because the last, like, three four years i've been doing songs which conceptually don't fit on an album together songs like in the bleak midwinter translated into scots 
you know, they just don't, that doesn't fit in with Bonnie Lassa 5 e <laughs> at all. So I, you know, haven't really released an album or an EP for many years. I've just been doing it digitally. And um, so far that's been okay. But um, yeah, so I'm going to sing a song called Bonnie Udney, which is in a collection of folk songs that have over 3,000 songs in this collection. And it's eight volumes and it's called the Greg Duncan Folk Song Collection. And this is in volume four. And it's just a, a little, it's quite a beautiful melody. I really like it. But it was uh, collected in Aberdeenshire as well. You shine where you stand The mere I look on you The mere my heart warms If I were in Nodney I'd think I's a tame For there I get sweet hearts For here I get name It's near the long road, love that I hate to gang Nor is it the land miles that makes me think lang But the one thing that grieves me and makes my heart sad Is leaving who you want me and yon bonny lass Well the lads about at me they're all over they tack a reed's delight in the curtain o' oh, meats. They kiss them and clap them and spend money free. Oh, are the earths in Scotland, bonny odneys for me. I once loved a fair maid, she said she loved me. And her parents were willing that wedded we'd be. But for all of her promises, she has forgot me. And since she's got another, let her go, where will she? Fife is my guest today on Acoustic Alternatives, and I feel like I should admit 
I haven't, like I said, I haven't spent much time with the records. I like what I've heard, but you also have the kind of voice that could sing John Bomarito is a big jerk. And I go, that's beautiful. Oh, I so, won't sing that. No, please don't. don't. I've actually had somebody do that. But uh, <laughs> that, that the, the feeling that I get from your music, though my name is, uh, my, my grandparents moved from Sicily to America, so I'm, I'm 50% mm-hmm. Sicilian. But my mom has what I usually say is Euromut. So there's some <laughs> Irish and Scottish and, and you know, our European yeah background mm-hmm. and i think i think my heart is from ireland not no offense to scotland but that like the the style of music you sing yeah. to me feels much like the celtic music in in my soul yeah i mean there's such crossovers a lot of the ballads you've got irish versions of them and oh i think we just had like a power we did thing. everything's still going though still all working i'm yeah, Irish and Scottish music, you know, they go hand in hand. You know, there's beautiful mm. bands like Silly Wizard, Boys of the Loch, bands that were trailblazers in Irish folk music that I listen to and I, I like. Very good. That's what I'm hearing then. Let's talk about a younger you then. The the you that you mentioned your parents in the concert, so I know you actually have a good relationship with them. You grew up, I think. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah, rolled your eyes. No, no, we do, we do. Uh, Aberdeen, which is what it says on the map, is Aberdeenshire to you. What is the difference for somebody like me? Okay, so there are two different municipalities. Uh-huh. So Aberdeen City is Aberdeen City Council, and Aberdeenshire is Aberdeenshire Council. So in terms of arts funding, funding for schools, funding for education, um, I guess all your other boring local council stuff, they are two different things. Okay. Um, so I'm not from Aberdeen City. I'm from between Aberdeen and Inverness, effectively. Okay. Yeah. What's it like growing up there? Is it a lot of rolling hills? Is it more like a city like you're in today? Not a city. Uh, 4,000 people, two beautiful rivers, uh, and some traffic lights now. Oh, great. Yeah, we, we got them. We have like an Asda, which is Walmart, <laughs> effectively, but no guns. We don't oh, have guns. good. Thank you. Um, I'll come visit then. It's, it's amazing. You could literally go for a walk. And probably see maybe no one, mm. uh, which is lovely. Um, yeah, there's some little hills. One's called the Clashmich. It's it is rolling hills. Yeah, with I mean Aberdeenshire from mountain to sea. There's coastline everywhere. I I work a lot in Germany, and um, I took two musicians up to the Schleswig-Holstein. Uh, music festival which is a very prestigious kind of crossover classical music festival, and they were like, we should go to the beach, and I was like but we have a gig and they're like yeah but after the gig and i was like okay cool <laughs> turns out they're so landlocked that like the idea of visiting north which is like near denmark is like a huge thing and going to the beach is really important to them so i guess in the states here that is true as well but we have yeah. lake michigan yes close to us but yeah um growing up in aberdeenshire is amazing it is a region of huge inequality like you've got Balmoral where the queen lives for half the year or the ki- the queen did live the king now who <laughs> visits and then you've got you know a lot of rural deprivation hmm. like not being able to access some forms of healthcare, not being able to access you know for example music lessons because you're in such a rural area hmm. and there's maybe not great public transport links to get you into the city to access those things so yeah it's there is multiple deprivation in in Aberdeenshire 100 percent like it's not a mecca it's not like the best and be all and end all but like we're working on that right but it gave us you (laughs) um it also gave us um Annie Lennox oh my goodness oh maybe that's Aberdeen City um Emily Sandy you know the ones like next to me I've actually interviewed her Believe it or not, I've interviewed her. Find him, you'll find him next to me. She grew up in Aberdeenshire. Oh, goodness. <laughs> um, and also Dame Evelyn Glenny, Aberdeen. Um, the she is the percussionist. She is also deaf, so she uses uh, loads mm. of other skills to to do what she does. Um, loads of musicians, lots of skiers. Um, Hannah Miley, an Olympian. She's also from Aber- Aberdeenshire. I'm right. sure there's a list of people on the internet on Wikipedia. I'll look it up later. Yeah. It's cool. What did you do for fun when you were a kid? Since it was so rural, there's not a lot of, like, you, did you go to the movies? Did you play in the yard? I mean, what did you do for fun? Folk music. Well, I wow. went to folk clubs. Wow. With like, like at 10? Was... You were doing that at 10? Yeah. So, like, um, there's an organization called the Traditional Music and Song Association in Scotland. I've been a director of for a number of years now. But they had branches in the northeast, and they would have ballad competitions and sing-arounds and folk clubs and... I think my mum and dad would use that as kind of like a babysitting service because they're not into folk music at all. Um, 
but like you know I'd also do like AMDRAM and debating club and public speaking society in school this sounds very posh and highbrow it, it's not like that believe me um I went to a state school called the Gordon Schools and I was actually there a few weeks ago to be the the keynote speaker at their prize giving, Aww. which was so sweet to go back to my high school. And I got to sit on like this throne with our coat of arms behind it. And it was like proper. It was founded in like the 1800s by the Duchess of Gordon uh, in order to educate the town or the township at the time. And um, it's kind of like Hogwarts. Like it literally has like houses, Fraser, Satan, Badenich Aww. and Gordon. It is. It's got a Latin motto. It like pretends to be like a, a cool upper brow school, but really it's a state school. Um, and I love my time there. So I went to a place called the Gordon Schools. But lots of people on the internet like to conflate that with Gordonston, which is where Prince Philip went, right? Um, so no, I went to a state school. I did not go to an elite uh, private school called Gordonston. <laughs> Let's just get that out there. But um, really, it had amazing teachers who you know spent their time and their money to take us to debating club so yeah I got to like I had amazing upbringing of so many like hobbies and different things I could do and I can understand that there's a lot of boredom in the town for kids and you know they'll get involved in all the wrong sorts but I had such a great it's a perfect place to raise kids there oh nice yeah well obviously music was the most important because that's what you do for a living (laughs) <laughs> oh, that's another hesitation. Oh, okay. Maybe I maybe I jump to a conclusion. Correct me. It is the most important. Um because I'm doing it for a living, yes. But I'm really interested in politics. I noticed that. That's and a little farther down in the notes. Yeah. <laughs> so it is tricky because for a number of years I found music to be extremely hard to do because I've put my flag to the mast on so many different issues mostly Scottish independence since I was 16 years old that flag's been to the mast to the point where I'm you know some people might choose not to come to my gigs over that some people who identify as unionists they they might not come to my gigs Mm. uh they'll send me quite horrible stuff online so unfortunately this issue is only in Scotland the the hatred the division it's only in Scotland like everywhere else kind of understands the situation like I remember immediately after Brexit, I'd go and tour in Germany and um, people would say, oh my God, we're so sorry for you. Like you didn't vote for this and you've been dragged out. Like I think when you're a folk singer that ends up sticking their flag to the mast on things and you get to go and sing at rallies and give your free time to causes. Mm -hmm. I feel like I give my free time to a lot of things. Um, But like it's difficult because you think, wow, maybe I could do something more meaningful than music but then you do a gig like tonight and you're like this is meaningful yeah so you connected with a room full of people i'm exactly. sure most of it had never heard you before yeah 100%. and a lot of them bought the cds exactly. and talked to you in length after the show yeah and a lot of them are now more knowledgeable about the situation that scotland's in right so including myself yeah what's more important than than that because mainstream media isn't going to do that Mainstream media is not going to tell you about the fact the UK government wants to send people to Rwanda or yeah, didn't yeah know like music is politics and politics is music. And I have so many horrible messages, mostly on Twitter or X saying, shut up and sing, shut up and sing. But when your music is your politics and your politics sometimes maybe is your music, you, they're intrinsically linked. And now I feel like I as a human, is, I'm intrinsically linked in that too. So some people were, will come to me or gravitate towards me some people will ward off me but at least i know that i'm i have integrity and i'm sticking up for what i believe in and not everybody's going to like you if even if you didn't sing and talk about political issues not everybody's going to like you that's just a no, fact no so you I, you have yeah. seemingly thick skin you've you've handled it well from what i can tell from what i'm reading online uh, and reading about you maybe again maybe i'm wrong but it seems like you're like you know what i don't care i'm gonna do what i do yeah to an extent i think there is a there is a tar- like an effort there is a huge systematic approach to how these people troll individuals like myself and that they have energy they're in their hundreds they're mean and i'm just me yeah. so when they go in and they want to actually have debate and discussion and healthy discussion that's cool but when they're just commenting about your appearance or making horrible comments about you that that's where i just block and i move on because they can't be at that point right they have nothing else to say so they go for your appearance and that's not nice no 
Well, so then in school, did you study politics and music separately, or did you just pick up politics as kind of like something you're passionate about because you're passionate about it? Yeah, so I didn't go to a normal university or college. I went to the Royal Conservatory of Scotland. I auditioned when I was 16 and I got in, but I had to wait until I was 17 to go. I only did traditional music, okay. never studied politics. Um, maybe in another life, I would have, you know, when I was 15, 16, this is when you decided, mm -hmm. like, do I go and I study this, you know, I try to get into this conservatoire? Or, you know, 16 was when our independence referendum was, and that was the first time I voted. And I was really engaged, and I thought maybe I could study international relations or current affairs or be a correspondent or something. I don't think I'd be a very good correspondent because I'm too, I'm not, like, I'm very biased <laughs> towards my side. So there was a crossroads at age 15, 16, where it was like, okay, do I study this or do I go and study music? And I'm very glad I did music because I'm sure I'd regret it. You, you, you regret things either way, don't you? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. I, I mean, I could have taken a path to radio much sooner than I did. I tried to. Well, I'm glad you did. 20 years later, I finally started doing actual radio. Yeah, but I'm glad that you're here. Yeah, and yeah you're this isn't radio, but it. this is the extension of yeah. losing my radio job in the pandemic and doing something that fills the hole of what I got yeah. to do there that I love. But yes, there, there are paths you can go on. And I mean, there's still potentially for you, you could follow the other path later. Yeah. There's no wrong path, right. and I'm, um, you know, just a few days ago, the, the the kids in Scotland got their exam results through, and there's a huge campaign saying there is no wrong path. Like that is it. Like you do what you want to do, and I'm sure maybe some point down the line, when I'm exhausted of touring, <laughs> and I'm tired, and I have the knowledge, experience, and you know, age, and life experience behind me, that maybe I can run, um, in Scotland. So at the end knows. of my questions, you've jumped to that one. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay, no, that's I'm good. We'll, uh, we'll we've buried circle. the lead. We'll, no. we'll, we'll circle yeah. back to it probably. But <laughs> okay. it seems that it's meant to be a compliment. You're very passionate about your subject, the politics subject, and you're very knowledgeable about it. Like you speak with such authority. I feel like you could be, you know, speaking on TV about, and I think you have done some of that, but speaking about what your beliefs are and the facts, and not just what your beliefs are, but you're, you're telling us stories in your concerts that are very educational. I mean, you could be a teacher too. You've, there's a lot of things you could be. I get to teach songs sometimes. So I do workshops yeah. and um, you know, just a few days ago in Chicago, I was teaching at the old uh, school folk music yeah. uh, place. It was great. It was like a hour and a half long workshop on Scots language and you know, we, we all sung together. We learned some songs. So I love teaching. I love that kind of stuff, but I have a portfolio career that I can do all of that stuff. And sometimes I write for a newspaper called The National and the topics can be on anything. It could be on, you know, cultural events like, you know, the new Barbie film or the death of, you know, Sinead O'Connor. Right or it could it. be about corruption and the Conservative Party, Boris Johnson's demise, <laughs> downfall in politics, like really about anything. And I think if I rushed into trying to be elected, I would actually lose the ability to do most of the things that I do. Um, you know, in terms of having one job and only one job. So I'm gonna stay doing all do these this. things. This is what I'm gonna do. Do that for what I'm gonna do. But um I'll sing a song called Scotland Yet okay. which ties in with all this. I might sing it unaccompanied um because this song was written in nineteen ninety eight by Davy Steele. It was released at the time when Scotland got its own parliament. So it's very fitting to what we've been talking about. And um, in 2014, I think a lot of people used this as like an independent song. And I guess now after all of the debacle and we didn't get the independence vote, we didn't win 45 to 55. But there was a lot of lying in terms of Brexit, pensions, oil. We didn't we didn't get it. And we're not allowed another vote. The Supreme Court has told us. <laughs> so this song is now like, about keeping our devolution, keeping our legislative powers, keeping our self-determination as much as we can. So. Can you thought o oh, what we hear in this land o oh, oh, the leal the healing glen the dark extreme the fertile island field they seem to offer different views when looked at fear within can strangers be the only eyes to see it all seeing the choice will be upon us soon To set our destiny And I'll drink our 
toast to Scotland yet, whatever yet may be. Our mother tongue spoke different wise, we pass to present ties, each separate and yet entwined. It's where your real strength lies. But should this strand untwine itself, the others to forsake, then all would be forever lost, for all the strands would break. The choice will be upon us soon to set your destiny, and I'll drink a toast to Scotland yet. Whatever yet may be, while we still seek to blame our woes and pains on someone else, we'll never hear the strength to solve our problems for ourselves. In truth, we fought each other, mayor. Learn this for your past. And then together we can choose for ourselves at last. The choice will be upon us soon to set your destiny. And I'll drink a toast to Scotland yet, whatever yet may be. The choice will be upon us soon. To set her destiny, and I'll drink a toast to Scotland yet, whatever yet may be. Wow. Wow. <laughs> it was as beautiful as when you did it with the room full of people <laughs> and solo in front of me. Um, this is a memorable experience for me. So thank you. Thank you. My, my guest today on Acoustic Alternatives is Iona Fife. And normally you would find me in Grove Studios. Grove Studios is a place in Ypsilanti that I talk about. And I'm going to mention them real quick because they kind of are indirectly a sponsor of the show. They've been uh, hosting me since I began doing this in 2020. And it was their encouragement. Oh that said, hey, we miss you on the radio. Will you please do a podcast in our studio so that we can hear what you do? We miss that. So without Grove and what they offer, if you if you come back to Michigan and you bring a band and you need a place to practice, that's where you go. Awesome. You can rent space 24-7 there with a keypad, and you go in and you pick a room and in true. advance, and it's really affordable. Yeah. It's a great place. I do the podcast there, DJs practice there. You can crank it up, <laughs> not bothering your neighbors. It's a great spot. So look up Grove Studios. And if you want to support me, Personally, I have a Patreon page. I know you do as well. So if you go to johnbomarito.com, look for Acoustic Alternatives. At the bottom of that page, there's a link to my Patreon page. And we could mention yours too. How do they find your Patreon page? Just, just Iona Fife. Yeah. At Patreon? Yeah, or, or patreon.com forward slash Iona Fife. Fife. There you go. Yeah. It's a great way to support uh, people who are trying to oh, do yeah. their thing. Totally. I'm I'm like, I, wow, it's really helped during the pandemic. And like a lot of the time I'll put that back into creating new content or being able to like breathe and take a step and be like, okay, today I arrange a song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Without worrying about, you know, things. Right. For me, it's like if I have my next guests after you are a duo from Nashville and mm. I, it's going to require a little bit more video than I can do with what I have. <laughs> And so I'm going to hire somebody. Awesome. And I also, you Creating know, opportunities right. for other people, which is awesome. There yeah. You go. I, I want to support the music scene that I love by giving, shining the spotlight on it the best I can, letting people hear things maybe they haven't heard before. That's the whole point yeah. of, of doing this for me. So thank you for being a, a guinea pig with for me in this me. experiment in a home with... I have no idea if it's going to turn out or not. I'm, I'm sure it'll be fine. You might hear some like people drinking in the background. Maybe. I'm having a gin too. It's okay. It's fine. Do it's you want like, to sit before we continue? Yeah. <laughs> go for it. I'm going to mention some of my favorite artists from Scotland because when I think of Scottish music, mm -hmm. I don't think of what you're doing. Okay. I think of my favorites, which are The Proclaimers, oh. Snow Patrol, Delamitri, Texas, Aztec Camera, Paolo Nutini, Louis Capaldi has my album of oh the my year God, so far. Paolo Nutini, I love him. Yeah, Simple Minds, Travis, so Love and Money, Shirley Manson of Garbage, Mark Knopfler of Dire Straits, Midger of Ultravox, and one we have in common. Wait, you have Mark Knopfler and Dire Straits in there? He said they... The, Mark Knopfler is definitely not Scottish. It says on Wikipedia that he is. Really? Are they lying to me? I went to see Mark Knopfler because loads of folk musicians play with him. Yeah. So John McCusker, a fiddler, plays with him. 
uh, Michael McGoldrick, uh, an Irish like flute player, whistle player, also plays with him. And he did the Local Hero soundtrack. Yeah. Local Hero yeah. is in Pennon, Aberdeenshire. So oh. he's a bit of a legend, but I don't know if he's... If he's is we he should from, look that up not again. from the northeast of England. Well, then Wikipedia... Either way, that's a really good list. But this is like kind of indie pop kind of... Yeah, by Love Hulu's mm. Capaldi. And um, Paolo Nutini, oh my goodness. Like, I went to... I treated my mum to Paolo Nutini tickets last Christmas and we saw him in Glasgow. Come and the right. show was great. The show was awesome. And, like, the song Acid Eyes is one of my favourite. I actually translated Rewind into Scots. Ooh, but very nice. Yeah, I I had an experience with him that and was. Lewis what's that? I, I love Lewis. Capaldi oh, Lewis! Too. That, that album, that, the, both of his albums are great. That new album is my album of the year, I think, so far. Yeah. Um, Paolo, when I was still working in radio, we used to do. Do you remember? Actually, maybe you don't. In the U.S., we had a, a chain of stores called Borders. Borders Books and Music. Oh yeah, loads of people keep talking about it. I'm like, what? Right. So like, people would go and sell CDs there and do yes. gigs in the. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. The radio station I worked for had a series called Live at Borders 01. It was the, the main flagship store in Ann Arbor. Uh-huh. And we would have artists that came through with a new album. We'd interview them on the air, whatever. So that particular day, the morning host who normally did the interview said, hey, I'm not going to be there. You're going to get to do Paolo and Nutini. Cool. Fortunately, I got to do Paolo. Unfortunately, Paolo was stopped from Toronto into Detroit by the border crossing and was kept awake for way too long. So he was a little grumpy. Oh, wow. And it was in front, live on the air in front of 400 people. And the answers are very short and like unfriendly. And his record label rep apologized to me afterwards. Oh, blah. Next time I saw him, he did a very similar thing, but not in a bookstore. He did mm-hmm. a session for. Acoustic Cafe, which is a, a nationally syndicated radio program that I'm a big fan of, in this small space, and my station also was carrying that, and he was t- totally different. Yeah, and he did a full set as opposed to the three or four songs. Everybody, yeah. it was amazing. It's just like musicians are humans. Wrong place, <laughs> like, wrong time. Yeah, totally. And I think that I think the scary thing is is that you have to be on a hundred percent all the time because you don't want situations like that. Like. I think maybe this is the politician in me that's like you it's tricky because people will talk and you know things will happen and people's first experience of you is like the thing that they remember and like you told me this anecdote years after because it's a memorable anecdote and I never want to ever have someone (laughs) um ever be like oh she was a nightmare she was hot she was she was moody but like I have fibromyalgia, which is a chronic pain, chronic fatigue condition. And I sometimes think that like tutoring exacerbates it and makes it much, much worse, which is why I think having one place I go to work (laughs) would be great. Turns out actually being a politician is is not that either because you have a constituency and you also have, um, you have to go go into, um, uh, well, not Congress, but Holyrood. Mm. Um, But yeah, it's like bad day bad time sometimes everyone is up for the crack like we you and I discussed doing this tomorrow morning and I was like there's absolutely no chance I'll be awake for that <laughs> we, I'm glad that you're and we did it me. tonight <laughs> I'm glad that we're not passing over the opportunity to, to I talk know, I'm really same. enjoying my I'm conversation delighted. with you same. Uh, one of the artists I didn't mention was one that is on your list of favorites is Edie Reader as well oh yeah she is so sweet I think I prefer solo stuff to fairground attraction honestly yeah i mean i mean she is also the kindest to me on on social media um i actually we know each other oh. um in, in real life and we met properly for the first time at a dear friend of ours funeral rab noakes who is a legend he also performed with jerry rafferty and mm. on his own in his own right with barbara dixon who was uh, in chess with elaine page like he he's a legend and he passed away and um his funeral brought people from the music community together and um myself and um Eddie had been speaking on Twitter for years and years. She's been she's very much her and I our politics align and um when there's been some horrible stuff happening, she's always been sticking up for me and being lovely. And um yeah, when I had knee surgery, she mailed me saying, you know, uh, please come around for a cup of tea in Glasgow and she's she's great. She's very sweet um and just very supportive of the younger generation of singers coming through like i'm not poppy at all but her burns album is awesome love it yeah she's sweet good stuff uh the proclaimers probably sing with the largest accent of the bands that i mentioned Mm -hmm. and uh you know even their song throw the r away is kind of joking about yeah in a way uh you seem to be on a mission which I, i admire to keep 
the, your native language alive, which I really admire. Where did that come from? Where did that passion come from? Your parents? Yeah, so I guess I'm speaking to you in Scottish Standard English. So yes. I'm speaking to you with like proper English accent, not English accent, but like I'm giving you my pronunciation, my T's and my whatever. Yeah. Um, my The way that my mother and father would speak to me at home would be in full Doric, Doric dialect of the Scots language. So like our household language would be Scots and then everywhere else would be English. Well, not everywhere else. Like in the playground at school or the squeal, um, kids would speak in Doric or in Scots. And then inside the classroom, you'd see all of these like kind of firmer chills and like kids code switch to English because we were conditioned to think you have to speak English in a formal setting. Um, and yeah, when my mom and dad were at the the school, and if they ac- accidentally spoke Doric in the school, they would be belted, you know, like physically, you know, the belt. Yeah. They'd get that. What? And in Wales, if you were a Welsh speaker and you accidentally spoke Welsh in school, you would be forced to wear the Welsh cross, which is kind of like a, a wooden thing around you all day. So yeah, there was a, a time in the UK where regional dialects, regional accents or full bore languages were oppressed so much that they didn't want it in the education system at all because the UK government believed that it would create um, people that didn't couldn't get jobs or anything. But I was I was tell, oh if you speak like that you're not gonna get a job, you're not gonna succeed, you're not gonna get uni, like you're not gonna you know, you're better just to anglify and to seem, you know, <laughs> understandable. But like nowadays you know, we're seeing Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stain in Scots, Paddington Bear, Diary of Wimpy Wayne, all these books translated into the Scots language for young kids to be able to identify with their sense of cultural identity and be able to use their language and read stuff in their own language. Animal Farm, the <laughs> George Or Orwell, is now Animal Farm. Yeah. Uh, it's really cool. I love that. But um, when I was growing up, it was just like ballads and burns. That was the, the only thing you could access in Scots. And now, you know, the Scots Word of the Day ran by Len Penny, a good friend of mine on TikTok, means that people can access Scots everywhere. I mean, this is not the Outlander effect. We've had Outlander since 2014. But 1.5 million people said that they spoke Scots in 2011. Um, And it's still not recognised as a legal language. However, Spotify did add it to its back end of categories in 2021 after this campaign. And a lot of our politicians, I sit on a cross-party group on the Scots language um, ran by Holyrood. So lots of politicians and then stakeholders in the language, you know, Scots Language Centre or whatever. So it is on the political agenda. Um, we had a public consult. So in America, I guess you, you guys call it public comment. Uh, so we had a public com- consultation in November of last year. We're going to get the results of that. And um there's hopefully going to be new legislation put out very soon called uh, the New Scottish Languages Bill, which would encapsulate a Scots Language Act to say that Scots is a legal language and should be protected as a protected characteristic. And an update to the existing Gaelic Language Act, which was created in 2005 by the Labour Lib Dem government. So an issue that languages sometimes face is that they are dis- discounted as nationalist agenda. But that is certainly not the case. I know people of all political backgrounds, class backgrounds, that speak Scots or speak Welsh or speak Gaelic or Gaelic. It should not be politicised. Sometimes in Northern Ireland, we've seen Ulster Scots and Irish Gaelic be politicised. But in Scotland, we don't want that. We need the languages to be on equal footing, but fairly and on the right terms. Um, And that is not by division. That's good stuff. That's good information. I did not know more stuff you're teaching me. <laughs> someone, someone. I just said that tonight. I wanted the people at the gigs to go away more richer in knowledge about Scotland and our traditions than they did when they came in. And you know, I usually play with a band, and I hate playing piano. It's not my thing. I usually just sing. And really, it's not about musical virtual. So you know, it's not really about that. It's just about explaining what's going on and the traditions and the songs and the language and that is by song i guess well i i enjoyed your story about trying to get kids to teach or to learn it as well and uh, before you'd sing what you sang i'd already noticed that it seems that your most recent actual release was a combo english gaelic not gaelic sorry uh <laughs> English Scots Scots uh, Scots uh, yeah. version of Taylor Swift's 10 minute epic song oh yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> like yes. how do you do that first of all and could you like you do you know it in your head or do you have to read it 
Do you, th- yeah. do you think it? Oh, okay. So Taylor Swift, All Too Well, 10 minute version yes. came out in 2022. It was the first song to knock American Pie off the Billboard chart as the longest song. It was originally released on the Red album, but as we all know, she's re-releasing her songs um, in order to get around copyright issues and horrible stuff that happened yep. to her. Um, when All Too Well 10-Minute Version came out, I was like, this is amazing, but it also works in Scots. So I did have to read it. I couldn't remember it all. Um, I can't imagine that she can remember that whole song. She can somehow. She remembers 44 songs. She does 44 songs per night on her tour. That's crazy. I'm going to see her three times in Edinburgh next year. And um, I got loads of hate for pu- posting that publicly, but um, you were allowed to buy four tickets. So I bought three, <laughs> you know. Um, but this is in the UK, so it's not thousands of dollars per night. It's like a yeah, no, hundred. I, I know people from here yeah. that buying tickets this year in France because the it's flight, cheaper. hotel and tickets are cheaper than buying. Yeah, so there's much more public consumer laws. But yeah, she put out All Too Well 10 minute version and it took me like three months of dabbling to get it translated and then on the 12th of December, the day before her birthday, I finally recorded it um, because I'm, I'm a Swifty, massive Swifty. And yeah, I mean, it was only put on Bandcamp, but like no one really noticed, which is fine. I, I stumbled into it today and I thought it was brilliant. But we have a full version of Love Story, like a band version, but I really want to get pure clearance on that because that'll go on iTunes and all the other places so permission would be nice permission clearance making sure that I'm not taking her words out of context but no one's came after me thus far but also I think like she seems like a really decent human yeah and her first ever appearance on UK television she went on she was like 16 or 17 she went on wearing a beautiful tartan dress and talking about how she had Scottish ancestry but I think she didn't realize that this was a UK wide uh, telecast that was going to like all of the nations and not just Scotland but it was like at that point I was like I love her I love her so much yeah but she's been with me for 17 years that's a long time yes Anyway, more enough Taylor chat. <laughs> no, I, I just think it's ambitious that you're taking on like trying to keep a language alive that is not dead, but people seem to be trying to squash it. And yeah. you're like, no, no, I'm gonna, mm-hmm. I'm gonna perform in that language actually to keep it, keep yeah. it going. I mean, my so. degree was in that language. Well, like, kudos. You know, you can go to conservatoire and learn Scott song, or you can actually in Aberdeen you can have your MRI scan of like your knee or your like a cat scan and you can have them talk to you in Doric and your headphones oh wow yeah it's really cool it's awesome well I've had guests uh, a lot of, I've done about 60 or so of the podcast version of my interviews most of the guests are my local musicians from the Michigan music scene which are fantastic awesome um I've had a few you know bigger names like uh, the lead singer of Toad the Wet Sprocket Glenn Phillips uh, you probably don't remember the Verve Pipe. They were an American hit band in the, the Verve. Verve Pipe. The Verve Pipe. Different band. Okay. The different. Freshman was their hit in the nineties. Uh, the lead singer of that band. I would be minus years old then, but I'm going to Google them. I'm going to uh, Google them. Jonathan Brook, Willie Porter, some of like the local, the, the national singer songwriters have been yeah. guests. But you're international. You've played all over the world. What brought you to America? Because I don't know. I mean, what what causes somebody to come this far over? Without knowing how well you're going to do. Playing a house is cool, but yeah. you know, wouldn't you be rather playing to 400 people in a listening room? The thing is, is that it really, really, like, it, it's so variable. Like, last year we did a West Coast tour and I could employ musicians here. So I had a trio and we were doing theatres and some house concerts and a lot of teaching and, like, loads of West Coast venues. And, you know, just the industry is a nightmare right now. Like, you're we're just on its knees and that's everywhere that's not just in the US that's in the UK and Europe like there is different areas in Europe have different arts funding and all that kind of stuff and I know that some arts funding in states doesn't exist so like venues are not you know supported like they should be and like there's a thing in the UK called the Music Venues Trust and it's there's a people are trying to get back on their feet after the pandemic also musicians in the UK are trying to get back at on their feet after Brexit and like the rubber tape, the red tape of being able to tour in Europe. So you'll find that now each European member state wants UK musicians to have their work permits and their carnets and their visas and their EORI numbers. Whereas if you have a work permit 
a PT, you know, visa for the states, you can do 50 states. So um, this is the last uh, few weeks of my visa, then I'll go home and then I'll apply again. Um, I love coming here. There's so many people with uh, ancestry or stories about how they love Scotland or Irish folk music and it's almost like an inbuilt audience of lovely, lovely, salt of the earth, amazing people. And like tonight was a house concert, but like we don't really have those in the UK. The idea of like someone opening their home to strangers and musicians and some friends and family and all that kind of stuff and putting on a spread and having drinks and just having an artist and putting them the artist up between shows and like that the industry wouldn't be viable if, if it wasn't for people like Stan and Barb to do this. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think North America, I've been to Canada before for a show in Fergus in Ontario for the uh, Tartan Day <laughs> in 2018 and I'd love to get back there but I think I've always thought, oh my goodness, like US. <laughs> like, How are they finding you here? Like what, have you had like radio success here? Have you? I don't think so. How do you get people to come to the show? (laughs) Um, I'm not saying you're not good enough for it. I'm just saying I don't understand what would make you go, I'm going to go hundreds of miles, thousands of miles from my home and hope that people show up. Yeah. There has to be something that makes you think you're going to sell tickets. I guess in Australia this year, I was doing like the uh, Festival of Small Halls tour, which was really interesting. So they take a, a musician based in Australia and then an international musician and they pair them up and they promote um rural concerts and rural areas which is an awesome awesome thing to do and in germany i feel like they have really good arts funding uh, really good state funding so you don't really need to worry about how many people will turn up or anything i haven't i'm going to be honest i've performed more in germany and more in the u.s in the last year or so than i have in scotland no um yeah it's it's just been my focus okay I guess like I need to do more on social media 100% I need to get everything updated and do all that kind of stuff but for me this tour I had to come out solo because I couldn't guarantee the fees for a trio so that is the uncertainty that musicians are are facing right now Um, so I'm glad I could do this with my piano this Nord that I have in front of me I took this on as hand luggage like that was uh, yeah it's been and I've hired a car and like I haven't done this much driving alone because I just you just don't know what's going to happen you don't know who's going to come you don't know if it's going to be small or big or yeah so we, we rely on cd sales and we rely on you know patreon and it's just such a precarious time for the arts in in every country but I feel like Germany's pretty good right now <laughs> um, so I'm looking forward to going back there for one day in September um I feel like I'm always either in Germany or in the US. I love it. I wouldn't have it any other way. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you found Thank us. You. I, if you if you need a musician, next time you come back, I have a guy that does all of the things you wanted tonight. Amazing. And I will I will recommend him, and I'll tell you more about him when we're done. But Brad Phillips is his name. Okay. He's a great guy. Uh, obviously, from, from seeing you tonight, listening to your records, you're musically gifted. Uh, you're strongly political. Uh, I admire that you aren't afraid to stand up for what you believe in and air it out in public because a lot of people would be like, you know, you got you got you know, shut up and play music or whatever that yeah. people said to you. Like shut you could just say, okay, sing. yeah, right. You could say, okay, sorry, but you don't. You stand up, and I admire that about you. Um, been, you mentioned you're you're having been trolled on social media, and I still see you stand tr- stand tall and just. I mean, whether you're hurting inside about it or whether you're taking it personal or not, I don't know because I don't know you that well. But to me, your responses are very like, look, this is what I'm this is what I believe in. Too bad. There's there's no reason that we can't have opposite opinions. Yeah, I think uh, the the world has got such plurality. Plurality. Yes. Uh, There's a lot of polar opposites like i could post on twitter being like i love fizzy juice and someone would be like no 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 uh straight orange juice is better like there would uh, like i could I cause controversy yeah. no matter like if i just posted saying i'm breathing today have a great time someone would say something like at this point you like if someone's not going to be happy no matter what yeah. like um you know i got pulled up the other day someone said oh what about your carbon footprint iona like what are you doing to to solve this and i was like good good question i don't know what i'm doing so people are holding me to account yes i'm totally happy with that because it makes me be a better person and do better but when it's just nasty stuff you just have to look over it like nah. let it go yes i meant to bring this up when we were talking about the scottish language i uh, we had my phone earlier and it's it's recording the video right now so i can't do it again but Mm -hmm. i said hey siri what does iona mean in english okay 
and it's uh, to translate Iona from 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 Scottish to English, and it says, "I can't do that right now, or I can't do that yet." I think Fair it enough. said "yet." Yet. And I'm okay. like, "Ooh, yet, interesting." Yeah. Um, years ago, there was like a study done, and it was like you had to record yourself doing saying different words for Google um, voice recognition, and they needed yeah. Aberdeenshire accents. I was like, okay, cool. Interesting. Yeah, it was cool. But is think. is there a translation of Iona into a, like a English name? Well, from Gaelic to English, Gaelic to English, there will be. If you go in Iona Wikipedia, not my Wikipedia, but like the island Wikipedia, there should be something. It means something. Is it your birth name or is it a stage name? Birth name. All of this is birth name. What is what is the, does it translate to English? That, that anything that I, I, I don't even know. I can't even remember. No, never if worked. we had a phone right now, we could do it. Uh -huh. have you have a phone. Mine's busy. <laughs> Hold on. This is the warbling of um, someone tonight said, "Have you heard of Ramblin' Jack Elliot?" I was like, "Yes." He was like, "You know, he was just called Ramblin' Jack Elliot because he rambled a lot." So I'm going to call you Ramblin' Iona Fife. So <laughs> yeah, um, Iona in Gaelic, sometimes simply in Scots, Iona. Um, it means something. There's a Norse name to it as well. There, you, there you go. Have a have a little look. Founded by Saint Columba, the island. It's beautiful. Very good. But it does mean something, I think. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. So, as a live performer, what has been your greatest thrill? Oh, I think just like people singing with you. Yeah. Like people, like a folk club. Okay. So not, not like theatre like venues. No, like I've done Lorient Inter-Celtic Festival. Huge, huge like stages. Huge like the Palais de Congress in Lorient. Massive Celtic festivals. And like, I, I love that. That's great. Love being on a stage. Love, like I do costume changes as well. <laughs> um, Love that. But like singing here tonight was like a folk club vibe where like everyone is singing the chorus and they're getting a crack. That's just lovely. So much, so, so much love for that. Is there another record coming? I've got three in my hands. You mentioned a digital-only collection that you sell at your shows. Are you planning another collection of songs that are cohesive as a physical release, something that people can yes, hold in their hands? Yes, 100%. So the second full album is going to be an album of songs from the James Madison Carpenter collection. He was a Mississippi-born folklorist who went to the northeast of Scotland and collected some awesome ballads. So that's album two. There might be some Scots language Christmas stuff coming out this year. There might be, yeah. I mean, who knows? To be honest, I have no clue. There's so many songs, not not enough time. I haven't been home in two months. You say you're too busy touring, probably. I, to, to yeah, so I'd like to just breathe a little bit. Well, the sad truth about being a musician is that a lot of musician careers have an arc. You know, you have a time where you're popular, and then you kind of do this, and maybe you do this again, but. We talked briefly earlier about you possibly, have you considered, okay, I'm 40 and people aren't really coming to my shows anymore. I still love music, but maybe I'll, maybe I'll run for office now. Yeah. Is that, is that a thing you really considered at this point? I mean, folk music is a thing that, you know, you can be classed as a young folk singer for a long, long time. Uh, yes. <laughs> like, um, I absolutely adore Eliza Carthy. Love her. Um, and she, she is still classed as a young folk singer, you know? And uh, her and I are about 20 years apart. So I still have some you youth do. in me. Absolutely. Um, I didn't say you didn't. No, no, it's <laughs> fine. But yeah, sometimes I think when like you're exhausted and you probably spent more on the hotel than you did make at that gig, you're like, wow, I'm tired. But also I have so much fire in me about other things. And, you know, there has been like some people have asked, oh, are you going to run like, you know, the the deadline is this time to be selected and I'm like nah no I'm 25 you know I've been involved in trade union stuff for many years um a few years ago I got given the Scottish Trade Union Congress Equality Award for campaigning around sexual harassment in the Scottish folk music industry which is a huge thing by the way <laughs> um unfortunately so there's so much more to be done that I can probably do as a musician more so than an elected representative more lobbying to be done more things that I can get done really um and I yeah I would love to run for office and you know one day maybe be culture secretary of Scotland um this would be in Edinburgh at Holyrood and I would be a member of the Scottish Parliament I would love that that would be a dream come true whether my life plan will allow for that I, I don't know but um, I just know I'm going to keep 
campaigning on things that I'm really passionate about. You're good at a lot of things, I can tell. You're very, like I said, very passionate, very knowledgeable about the subjects you talk about. And you have that beautiful voice, which I would love to hear sing one Thank more song. Thank you. What will I sing? Something from the forthcoming album that isn't done. You don't have okay, to. Okay, well, it out yeah. There. This is the one. It's called The Waters Meet. And I'm not going to say more about that. <laughs> Acoustic Alternatives once again. Iona Fife, her latest release from a few years ago, Away From My Window. The latest release. The camera's over here. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the, the latest release. It's actually Dark Turn of Mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. But this is the only album. But Dark Turn of Mind was um, recorded very soon after Away From My Window was released. But um, it's the only thing in English. So, yeah. Ironically, it was funny because loads of radio stations... Uh, would play stuff from Dark to Bind six months after they shunned a lot of the Scott stuff and away from my window. <laughs> so Isn't that fun? It's very sad that like you put stuff... So at that point, I was like, well, if they're going to play this stuff in English, so like Away From My Window is a mix of English and Scots, Dark Turn of Mind, a mix of English, and I feel like Away From My Window, the stuff that got radio play was the stuff in English. Then this EP got played loads... Now I only release stuff in Scots, so they have they have no option. They have no they can pick the English tracks or the Scots tracks. There you go. So yeah, and it, it's it's worked on a few of the stations that I noticed had shunned some of the tracks have now played the Scots stuff. So I'm like, yes, good. Whatever um, you want to play, just yeah, play it. Happy, yeah. Final question: What is the song that you've written that you're the most proud of? Probably the Kenmuir Sheep Protest one. Uh, because it really says something so you can find that on my youtube it's not on Bandcamp. It's not on anywhere i haven't released it it's just called kenmuir and it's a rewrite of woody guthrie's deportees 
Um, I enjoyed that one tonight a lot, yeah, actually. Very passionate about the messaging behind that. When's it coming out? Can it come out? Because do you have to get what do you get through his family's permission? Maybe, maybe. I mean, that's probably easier than getting Nick Cave or Taylor Swift because I've also translated their works. Right. Um, but yeah, I don't. It's already out. It's already out there. Well, the video. Yeah, the video. You can actually purchase and own. Yeah. But the point of the song is not to make money off it. The point in the song was to get that message out there. And it was released this year on uh, World Refugee Week. And um, I wish I monetized it to give to uh, like a Glasgow refugee um, charity called Refugee. That was a thought, but I just didn't have the time. Um, but if people, you know, listen to it and hear the message behind it, then that's enough. I never want to make money out of that song at all. So probably not going to come out on, on a track okay. <laughs> yeah okay. if it's already out there yeah your listeners must think oh my god she's a nightmare <laughs> just because i'm a i'm a music fan that likes to actually own yeah what I listen to i know i understand the digital world is the current world but i, I don't prefer it <laughs> yeah i came up working in a record store and that's you know that's the first job I and i still store. buy records like as right. soon as taylor swift has a new record out like i buy it and i frame it and i put it on my wall i don't even own a record label like a record um player, player. yeah it's madness i will buy a record player at some point yeah. because then i can play the records i have <laughs> but um, yeah my mom is full records you're on the road too much yeah doesn't matter. You don't need a record player until you. But I love CDs and I love liner notes and I always make liner notes. So there is liner notes to the other tracks. Right. They're on my band camp. That is the disadvantage of the digital world is I don't really. Mm-hmm. Have, I you agree. Flip it over and go, oh, who played on this? Oh, who wrote that one? You don't do that in the. Team. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you. Thank you mm-hmm. for agreeing with me and thank you for spending time with me and thank making you. it happen like in the strangest way. Like, do you want to do it after your show? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I've just never done this Loads before. of energy now. You were Tomorrow good. morning, you would be like dragging me out of bed being like, come on, Iona, let's, and I'd be like, sorry, what? I, I need eight cups of coffee before I do anything. <laughs> it's literally me. Yeah. Website, simple? www.ionafife.com. If people you want to find out more about you, they can do that. If they want to see you live in concert in, in America, sign up for your mailing list so they know when you're coming. Mm-hmm. This podcast is actually heard outside of America. I look and see where it gets listened oh. to, and sometimes people in India are listening. And other love it. Like so, hey, cool. Best of luck and keep doing what you're doing. Thanks. It is a it is a passion. It isn't about making money either. <laughs> I don't mind if I can cover the expenses that I have, and I get to get to hang out with people like you. So, thank a pleasure you. to meet you. Pleasure to meet you too. Thank you for listening to the podcast again. If this is your first time, there's hundreds, not hundreds. There's many more to explore. Maybe you're not familiar with the names, but if you listen to their first song, and I usually try and stick the first song within the first five minutes to keep your attention, you might find an artist from Michigan you've never heard and go, "Wow, how come I've never heard of this person?" Or, and I've got so much more to do. So love it. Thank looking you. forward to doing more. And uh, thanks again to Grove Studios for nudging me to do this three years ago. Whoop! Thank you. <laughs> Night.